to Talk Techie to Me. I'm Elizabeth, and today we're here to talk about Lockheed Martin Innovations. We're in Dallas, Texas at the Pro Museum of Nature and Science. They recently opened a new exhibit called Origins, Fossils from the Cradle of Humankind. And today we have two very special guests with us. We have Luke Olson, a visualization engineer with Lockheed Martin, and Becca Pichotto, who is the archeologist and curator of this exhibit. So you might be asking, how is an aerospace and defense company combining with a museum and a fossil exhibit? Well, to answer that question, we have to go back two million years ago. So Becca, can you give us some background on what this exhibit is and why we're here today? Yes, this exhibit is a partnership with the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, South Africa. And we have on display the original fossils of two different ancient human relatives. One of them called Homo naledi is about 300,000 years old. And the other one called Australopithecus sediba is about 2 million years old. And the sediba fossils in particular are contained in rock, just like you might think of a dinosaur fossil being embedded in rock. And this poses uh, extra challenges for us as scientists trying to study these fossils and get them out of the rock so that we can reconstruct uh, what sediba's life was like 2 million years ago and really where, where we come from as a species. So you mentioned that some of these fossils are encased in rock, which I would assume there's some challenges to see through the rock, to see the full fossil. And there's one fossil that we're focused on in particular today. Can you tell us a little bit about that fossil and how it's encased in the rock? Sure, when we find the Australopithecus sediba fossils, they are in rock and really if you just look at the rocks. They just look like rocks. Maybe there's a little bit of a bone sticking out the side. So a lot of these go through a medical CT scanner, which gives us a quick peek at what might be in there. And there's one particular block that's really quite large that we found um, really dozens of bones inside. And so our team's been working over the last about two and a half years to prepare the rock, move the rock away from the bones. So this scanner that you mentioned is where Lockheed Martin comes into play in this project. Luke, can you tell us a little bit about the scanner and how we use it at Lockheed Martin? So the, the scanner, it's an industrial CT scanner. What makes it different from a medical scanner is it's much higher power and much higher resolution. And that, that extra energy would be harmful to people. But since we're putting something that's already dead in, it's not going to hurt it. Um, we use that scanner for non-destructive testing, which lets us see inside of parts to make sure that they're gonna work it like we expect them to without having to like cut them in half. Um, this saves us time and money. Um, in this case, our rock is too big for any of these micro CT scanners. Uh, so Lockheed Martin's uh, scanner is much larger and can take really big parts. Uh, so it helps us, we hope that it helps us see inside the rock to be able to see the individual fossils that are there and then be able to study those bones. Can you guys talk a little bit about the processes that you went through, the trial and error? Give us kind of scene set for us what happened. All right, this block is really large and it's really heavy. Um, it's also not square, it's uh, longer on one direction than it is the other direction. It has a lot of bones, two million year old bones sticking out of it now because of the preparation that's been done, so it's very delicate. And this posed all kinds of challenges compared to the kinds of things you, your team normally studies. You'll, we'll normally scan parts that are a known dimension, they have flat bottoms, things like that. The fossil is very oddly shaped, so we had to create uh, holders and cradles for it. We tried a couple different things. We tried just setting it on the table with foam. Uh, it was too long on one axis. We tried standing up vertically with a laser cut acrylic stand. The acrylic was too dense. We finally settled on what was a trash can in the lab. And we all looked and we're like, that's the same size as the longest part of the fossil. We ended up getting a clean trash can uh, or a, a barrel that was for disposing of waste. And we used uh, some power tools, cut it in half, cut a smiley face in it, went and held it together with zip ties and that was our our loading dock for the fossil. Yeah. And what do you guys feel like you gained from it as far as the experience or anything that you can take away from it for your team? Um, for our team, we did get some interesting images from inside the rock and outside the rock. Um, and it was, this whole thing was a great experiment. We didn't know if this was gonna work at all. Uh, so it was neat to be able to see our experts um, working with, with your experts to try to solve this big problem uh, and to be able to get some data as much as we can out of the rock. And like Luke said, you know, we now know better how we might approach this problem in the future. 
Well, I can certainly say this is an incredible partnership and it's been so interesting to hear your perspective on this story. Thank you guys both for joining us today. And if you are in Dallas, Texas, I encourage you guys to stop by the Origins exhibit now through March 22nd, 2020. And don't forget, we wanna talk techie with you. So leave your comments and questions below and who knows, we might answer it on the next episode. Thanks guys, bye.